Hello and welcome to News Click. Just last week, the world encountered one of those seminal moments which fundamentally changed the way we understand the universe and pursue further knowledge of it. High tech labs in the US, assisted by groups of scientists in many countries, including India, observed the first concrete evidence of gravitational waves which were predicted by Albert Einstein more than 100 years ago. The proof of the existence of gravitational waves not only opens up new areas of inquiry and ways of conducting it, but also opens the doors for a new kind of astronomy. To help us understand this discovery and its implications, we have with us today Professor Patrick Dasgupta of the uh, Delhi University, Department of Physics. Welcome, Dr. Daskar. First, let me begin by asking you to explain for our viewers, what are gravitational waves and why should we consider them to be so important? Right. So, Einstein's general theory of relativity, which he proposed about 100 years back, in fact, last year was the Einstein uh, centennial, centennial year of uh, giving the general theory of relativity. Now, general theory of relativity is a theory of gravitation which is consistent with special theory of relativity. Now, special theory of relativity forbids any signal to move faster than the speed of light in vacuum. And therefore, if you have gravity created by, by masses as uh, given by the Newtonian laws of gravitation, then immediately one can ask if the masses change their position, would gravity be affected instantly? And this was the big problem of Newtonian gravitation and Einstein had realized this and he immediately saw that special theory of relativity requires a modification of gravitation theory and in 1915 he gave the final formulation of general theory of relativity which is gravitation consistent with special relativity and therefore immediately Einstein's theory would tell us that if you have mass distribution that are changing with time then the change in gravitation cannot propagate faster than the speed of light. So, they have to propagate with speed of light in vacuum and this propagating ripples of gravitation is what gravitational waves are. And uh, for our purposes, uh, if we go back a couple of hundred years or so, we are so used to thinking in terms of light waves, uh, motion by uh, light, then electromagnetic uh, waves. Now, we think in terms of gravitational uh, waves. So, what difference does that make? Absolutely. So, you know that light which have been used to understand universe because we see the stars and we make, make speculations about what stars are and then uh, work of Maxwell showed light is nothing but changing electric and magnetic field it's nothing but a special case of electromagnetic wave and then came radio waves and pioneering work was done by uh, late uh, professor jagdish chandra bose uh, whose work was later on uh, applied by markani to essentially make, make radio, radio waves a cam communication tool and then uh, in the beginning of 20th century a revolution in astronomy came when radio astronomy was established and radio astronomy showed that there are many, many, many objects which emit lot of radio waves which were earlier not predicted by optical astronomy. Things like quasars, things like blazars, things like radio galaxies, things like pulsars, they were all detected in radio waves. So, how was, how were the electromag, uh, how were the uh, gravitational waves detected? So, now Einstein's theory came and said that look, 
just like electric charges when they move about changing the electric field that propagate as electromagnetic waves similarly mass distribution when they change then they would send gravitational waves that means changing gravitational uh, field uh, in space as well as time and therefore gravitational and everything has mass and momentum associated every object in the universe have mass and uh, energy and momentum and therefore whenever they move about they would immediately send out gravitational waves so by detecting this fluctuating gravitational field which we call gravitational waves we would be able to find out how different masses are changing with time what are the masses in fact gravitational waves was indirectly detected by hulse and taylor around 1974 when they discovered two very compact objects which are called neutron stars they Revolving they discovered they are going other. about in about the common center of mass with a period of 8 hours and immediately they realize neutron stars are massive objects and these were each of them were 1.4 times heavier than the sun and when they went around each other with a short period of 8 hours they must have released lot of gravitational waves and if they are releasing gravitational waves energy is being lost and therefore they would be slowly in spiraling because their energy is being dissipated in terms of gravitational waves and this in spiraling that is a period increasing and the semi major axis decreasing that was detected using radio waves by hulse and taylor and for that in 1993 hulse and taylor were awarded nobel prize but this was an indirect detection one was not directly measuring the gravitational wave brother one was inferring by the change in the period now the announcement which came on february 11th was that the two ligos one in louisiana the other in washington independently because you have to look for the evidence right. independently and the coincidence both technique detected both detected both detected the fluctuation yeah. in the gravitation explain to us briefly yes this experimental setup yes and why it has taken us 100 years to be able to prove what einstein had foreseen and theoretically predicted but which we could not have observed till this experiment was set up and succeed absolutely so gravitation is the weakest of all forces for example if i take two protons and ask what is the gravitational attraction compared to the electrostatic repulsion one will find easily that gravitation is 10 raised to power 40th times weaker than electromagnetic force and therefore whenever masses move about of course they produce gravitational wave but you can't detect but the that. amount of gravitational wave its strength is very very weak for example if a gravitational wave source emits out huge amount of gravitational wave at a distance of about 30000 light years away from us then the strain that it will cause because gravity is after all a geometrical uh, uh, effect so the strain that is change in the distance between any two test particles divided by the actual separation the change in the distance divided by actual separation will be less than a fraction of proton's diameter right. we know proton's diameter is about 10 to minus 15 meters so to measure the strain of a powerful supernova explosion creating gravitational wave 30000 uh, light years away from us one has to measure the change in the length between two objects kept 4 kilometers away is less than the diameter of the proton that is mind boggling that sensitivity is so we require such a sensitivity how on earth one is going to measure two mirrors which are kept 4 kilometers away from each other and when a strong gravitational wave passes by the change in the length of a 4 kilometer separated uh, detector 
is only a fraction right. of a proton's diameter. Right. And therefore, the technique which is used is Highly cutting complex. edge technique. They are the cutting edge technique using quantum theory of light, using very fantastic seismic isolation, using fantastic vacuum, yes. understanding very stable laser which will be able to emit powerful amount of laser but at the stable thing I mean the power must not fluctuate. Right. So the Herculean task of detecting length changes fraction of a proton's diameter yeah, it's made it so challenging yeah. that only after 100 years of theoretical prediction could you arrive human at beings have detected. Yeah. Uh, would you also agree that in a sense, this shows once more uh, how theoretical physics is no longer possible to be pursued uh, very effectively without the assistance simultaneously of very advanced experimental science. Absolutely. See, physics and for that matter, all of science, their experimental knowledge. After all, science is all about trying to find out how the nature works. And to find out how nature works, we just can't imagine. That will be mythology. Right. So we have to model the workings of nature. And in order to give the correct model or the best model, we must constantly try, and try to have a dialogue with nature. Dialogue with nature meaning we have to make experiments and see what nature tells us. Yeah. So experiments are nothing but having a dialogue between scientists and the nature. And Hence, physics requires to very good precision experimental results. But sometimes what happens that things like gravitation which are very weak forces, experiments are not so easy. And therefore, they are the theoretical people who using their mathematical genius, using the idea of symmetries, aesthetics, they create model. Einstein sure. was one of the first exactly. physicists who used the idea of aesthetics but still, and mathematics. But still at some point you require that experimental verification. Absolutely. In fact, Einstein's general theory of relativity, which was proposed in the final form in 1915, the first experimental prediction that is bending of light That's right. was done in 1921. That's right. So, so it took, it took long time. Uh, about six years Quite. to test the first prediction. As part of this experiment, there were teams of scientists from various parts of the world who participated in this, not in the direct measurement, but in uh, the calculations that went behind it and so on. Could you tell our viewers something about the role that Indian teams of scientists yes, played in yes. this? So Indian groups, particularly from uh, people who were produced from Raman uh, Research Institute by Professor Bala Iyer, what they did was they did very fine mathematical calculations of when two mass points go about each other, then what kind of gravitational wave signals they produce. Although to lowest orders the, the signal was known, but Bala Iyer and his students they did higher order calculations and to uh, something called post Newtonian approximation to larger than 3.5 post Newtonian approximation, they calculated the form of the signal, which we call the chirp signal because yes. they sound like the yeah. chirp of a bird. That's right. On the other hand, so they were doing theoretical calculation based on Einstein's general relativity, but producing a mathematical signal will tell you that, okay, these are the kind of signals we expect, but how do you pick it up from? Yeah the experimental apparatus as we just said that the signals are very tiny. So the experimental signals are very noisy and you have in the noise a buried signal. So that How has do to you be pick up decoded. That yeah. And that technique, the technique is also well known of the radar, radar uses yeah. the same technique, it is called right. match filtering technique. That's right, you have to b basically filter out filter the out background noise. Yes. Yeah. So if you know the correct form of the signal which Bala's group was producing, the correct form of signal was known, but the actual signal coming from the detector, the detector output is very noisy 
and your signal is buried in it, how to pull it out? So, Sanjeev Dhurandar, who was an erstwhile professor of IUCAA in Pune, he and his students, postdoctoral fellow, uh, fellows, in fact, I was also a postdoctoral fellow associated with him, did similar kind of a work. Uh, he led a full team finding out how do you analyze the data which the LIGO uh, is giving us to pull out the signal. So, his students, his postdoctoral uh, fellows, they established the ways of doing the match filtering so that you can pull out the signal. There is a proposal on the table for several years, the proposal has been there to set up a uh, experimental yes. lab very similar to the one in the US in India as well. Uh, why India? What was the need to have another setup? Uh, is it to do with the distance between the uh, ones or a proximity to the equator? Could you tell us a little? Yes. That is a very important point. Now, how do you find, how do we find out that when two detectors have detected gravitational wave, how do we find out the direction? So, what one does is that if there are two detectors, the gravitational wave source can be in any direction. So, therefore, supposing one LIGO detector is here, the other is here, this is nearer to the source, it will first see the signal and then after a delay, the other detector will see the signal. So, what is the maximum delay possible? If one had a detector on the north pole and another detector in the at south the south pole, pole that will be the maximum. The maximum delay would be about 40 milliseconds. Right. It so happens that you have two LIGO detectors and if you have a detector on in India, then between the two LIGO and India, the delay, maximum delay possible is about 38 milliseconds, which is very close so to very maximum. close to maximum. And therefore, India becomes a very prime country where one should set up a detector so that we get a very big time delay. From that, we can find out which is the direction of the source. To find out the direction of the source accurately, we must have a detector in India. This is triangulation. Triangulation, absolutely. And this proposal has been there for the last four years. In fact, the LIGO people, they said that, look, we are, we will dispatch the advanced LIGO equipment to India. You install it. And you set install it, up. it. You find out how to make the best use of it. And this proposal was uh, made by the Indian team. There is a whole Indigo consortium, right. many people. In fact, our Delhi University is also part of the Indigo Consortium. I am also part of that. So, how do the chances look of our… Uh, so, this proposal is lying with the cabinet for the last two years. And the estimated cost to install a LIGO India detector is about 1300 crores of Indian rupees. Due to some reason, the cabinet has… Uh, been sitting on this proposal, uh, we hope that soon it will be um, cleared, particularly after the PM tweeted right. that um, well, gravitational wave has been seen and India must have a detector. Is this also partly due to what has been a traditional, shall we say, fear in India or a hesitation to invest in basic research? Uh, asking the question, what are we going to get out of it? What's the practical uh, spin-off? So, there has been this hesitation to invest. So, is this part of that hesitation? Uh, yes and no. Of course, there is a hesitation. After all, India is a developing That's country. Right. So, and therefore, we must find out where sh we must be very careful in which where direction we, spend we should the money. spend money. That is one thing. But also, I must also say that even physicists, who are not working in the gravitational wave, they are also a little bit hesitant, hesitant because it is a big amount of money and it is a very difficult experiment. So, uh, in the past, physicists who are not associated with gravity experiments, they have always been a little uh, skeptical that should India go for uh, such an experiment which is so difficult. 
Let me just uh, ask you a last question. There was in the uh, community of scientists considerable skepticism for considerable amount of time about gravitational waves, whether at all we would be able to prove it. And what we were discussing now, there were similar questions raised in the US as well. And it took considerable time and courage for the National Science Academy to approve this uh, project. But finally, the they have detected it, they have detected it yes. which has put at rest some doubts. And given the fact that these signals emanated from twin black, black holes, holes yeah. has it also put to rest some of the similar skepticism about black holes? Uh, well, uh, uh, not really. The reason is that the evidence which February 11 uh, announcement uh, about two black, black holes slowly in spiraling and finally merging to create a massive 62 solar mass black hole. Uh, the evidence that they are black holes and not compact objects is still a little bit um, indirect because to actually have the evidence of a black hole, one must hear the ringing of the black hole, which is, which is called the quasi-normal mode gravitational wave emission when a black hole is formed. It's called ringing of the black hole. Incidentally, the first person to talk about ringing of a black hole was a very uh, reputed uh, general relativist of India is C. V. Vishweshwara. Now he is retired, he is uh, in Bangalore, but earlier he was in Raman Research Institute, Bangalore. He was the first person in 1970 to do a Gedankan experiment where when you disturb the black hole, what kind of, how does the black hole respond to the disturbance. So, this quasi normal mode research was essentially started by Professor Vishweshwara. And in fact, the LIGO February 11th claim that they have seen two black holes merging into one bigger is that they have found that the ringing down has been almost, almost. is not clear whether one is really because the signal to noise ratio for the ringing down phase is slightly small. But no doubt with better and better um, uh, advancement of LIGO detectors, one will probably be able to pinpoint the ringing down absolutely without any hesitance and doubt. Then no one will ask questions about black holes. Thank you very much. Uh, Patrick, uh, My pleasure. for this very enlightening discussion and if you pardon the pun for throwing light uh, yes. on this important subject. Thank you. Thank you.